Now, so now we know that we can have multiple type of uh, multiple catch for one try. But what if if I have lots of statement here, right? And it is not guaranteed that all these statements are normal statement. There might be some statement which are critical statement, which means it might throw an error. And that's why you have to handle the error. And we don't have only one class of exception, right? We have multiple class of exceptions. Let's say somewhere here you got an exception that you don't know what the exact uh, what exactly the exception will be. It might be arithmetic exception, so it will be handled. It might be identity of automatic exception, so it might be handled. But what if if we have one more exception here, which is uh, maybe I don't know some different type of exception. So what you can do is, if you don't know the type of exception, you can simply say at the last, if it's not arithmetic exception, if it's not arithmetic sort of bound exception, then come to me. I will print unknown exception, right? So that you can handle all type of exceptions. So these are specific exceptions, and if you don't know the type of exception, you can simply print exception. So it's always better to have the last catch block as exception. Then you will say, why don't if you just pick this catch here, why don't if you, pick, pick, you can pick this catch here and put it here? Unfortunately, it will give you an error. It's because, let's say you got an error on this line. It will directly jump to the first catch. And first catch can handle all the errors, right? Then what these two exceptions are doing here? So, always write your catch, your main exception in the as a last catch, okay? So this is this is how you can have one try with multiple catch. Now let's say uh, uh, I'm going for the next type of example. Let me remove this uh, this part from here. I don't want array now. Uh, let me remove this part also, and let me remove these two catches because I I know now I'm not getting uh, array index out of an exception for sure because I'm not doing an array. Okay, let's say I want to take this value, which is uh, this 2, from the user. I want this j value should come from the user. What it means, I want to take, I want to use some type of uh, input class. And one of the input class is buffered reader. So if you have not gone through my video, which is user input, so I recommend to go to that uh, video. You will get the idea how to take input from user. So there's a class called buffer reader. We'll say br equal to new buffered reader equal to new input stream reader. What exactly this all means? I, I recommend to go to that video. Input stream reader and this it will be system uh, dot in. Okay. And let's import the package by using control shift I. You can see we got the package above. Now what next? Now we'll say, uh, since when you s we, we have a function in Java called as br.readLine. Now this function will fetch the value from the user and it will fetch in a string format. So we have to pass the input. So how to pass using integer.passInt and we'll give back it. Now you can see we have got the input from user. <coughs> Excuse me. We got the input from user. And we are storing that value in, in this variable called j. <coughs> now, now, the problem is there is a chance that you are expecting an input from user and user has given you some wrong value, maybe a string value and you are trying to convert this. So that it will throw an error. And it's showing us that it, it might throw an error. See this, if I go to this red bubble here, it says, Unreported exception, IO exception must be caught. It's because IO exception comes under checked exception. So your NetBeans also know that they are your J Java itself know that it might throw an error. So you have to go here, you have to write a catch. Now this time this catch is will be for IO exception. Waiting will be for IO exception and we'll say it is E and we'll print some input output error. Okay, I know that it will not throw any error. Oh, what's the issue now? Yeah, and you should write this block now in try block. 
So you can see we have we have solved this solved this error, and this should be the next line because we are well, we can calculate only after the assignment, right? And the initial value of j will set it as zero or one because I don't know the value of j once till I get the input from user. And let's just run with the uh, run with this code. It's waiting for the input. It will say two, and the output is four, right? So these type of exceptions are called as checked exceptions. Okay, and the con we'll continue with the next tutorial in the next part. And till then, do subscribe and thank you so much.